and still earn interest. Show me another investment that allows you to do that, period. I'm waiting. <laughs> I challenge people that everywhere else in the country. I haven't heard one yet. There is nothing else that allows you to access funds against it. Allows you not to have to pay the money back to it, yet still earns interest on the monies you borrowed. Because, why? This is where the brains start to fry a little bit sometimes. But if you, if you connect the dots, you get it. It's because where did you get the funds from? We're using our example, the 100K cash, million dollar death benefit. And like I said, don't get hung up on the numbers. Add a zero, take away a zero, okay. We got the cash from here, didn't we? And because we took the money from here, we never touched this. So the money's still there. So what do they do? Interest crediting time, they pay annually, by the way, each year. Boom, you get a interest check. Which means next year, Will you have more or less money there? More. More. Every year the rest of your life. Sweet. Guaranteed. Get it? It's really that simple. Some people try to make it more complicated than that. It's really not. Now, I can give you all kinds of details, but that's it. I just told you how it works. Let me walk you through an example. Oh, by the way, there's no repayment requirements. You never have to pay the loan, and the death benefit is collateral. When you take a line of credit, I've been told you earlier I'm a fan of HELOCs for short-term money borrowing, but there is a disadvantage. You've got to pay a payment, right? What if you take your money from here? Nobody's going to send you a bill. Yes. But that decreases the death benefit. Correct. True. Correct. Okay. So who cares? You care? <laughs> no. Neither do I. As long as you don't care about that, are we doing this for death benefit purposes or to maximize cash? Right. If you have death benefit protection needs, by all means, have one of those policies in place. And if you have one of those, I'll show you how to get the best price. They're cheap. You can buy 10 or 20, 30 year term cheap, most of you. Okay? Because you have some death benefit protection needs. And help you get that, or you can go online. I don't even really care. Okay? Take care of those needs, of course. This is not what we're talking about, though, are we? That takes care of your death benefit needs, right? We're talking about building cash. Is there a death benefit? Yeah, that's the collateral. That's the asset you're borrowing against. That's the property. It's like buying a property. That's the asset that you're taking the equity against, right? Same prop. And by the way, why is it tax free? Anybody ever taken a cash out refi or a line of credit? It's a loan. Right. Do you get a 1099 when you do that? No. Borrowed why? Money. It's not income. It's proceeds from a loan, isn't it? There's nowhere, in that, nowhere on the 1040 form for loan proceeds, is there? It's an income tax return. Is a 1099 issued? No. No. Does the IRS know you even have the money? No. Is it legal? Yeah. Yes. So how do you deal with it on your taxes? It doesn't you even don't. show up. You don't. There's no 10, you don't. You do nothing. There's no 1099 issued. Huh? It's only been doing it for 200 years, which is longer than the IRS has been around. By the way, 70% of, have anybody heard of an executive benefit plan? 70% of Fortune 500 executive benefit plans are exactly what I'm showing you. I'm talking to, uh, right now, two attorneys. It won't mean anything to you guys, but it's uh, Davis Miles. It's two co-founders of Davis Miles Law Firm. They're the, uh, it's the second largest law firm in the state of Arizona. They have 72 attorneys in their firm. And the two co-founders are going to retire five years. I said, Ellen Greg Miles on this a few months ago. He says, yeah, Charlie and I have been looking at this for the last year. We poked it with holes. We researched it. Ference, we love it. We can't find a problem. We want to fund this and so, and, and for our retirement. So we have tax-free retirement. I said, Greg, you're exactly right. We're running numbers on it. He's funding $1.2 million into one of these as we speak. I'm telling you, folks with money do this. By the way, 90% of our uh, uh, folks in Washington have these too. Okay? It ain't going anywhere. Uh, let, me run, so let me run a numbers example for you just to give you an idea so it can help you give a little bit better idea of really structurally how this works and we'll wrap it up. There's three numbers that are important to understand when you get a statement or you can look at this online every day if you want. And the three numbers are gross cash value, 
net cash value, death benefit. Now, gross cash value, what is that? That's the amount of money you put in, plus any interest that's credited to it, right? Death benefit is obviously what goes to yours if you get hit by an ice cream truck, right? Net cash value, which I'm going to explain further, is the remaining funds available to access from the death benefit, okay? I'm going to use an example. Now, I don't want anybody getting hung up with numbers because, again, we can add a zero or take away a zero. It doesn't matter. The process is the same. Let's assume you had 100000 of gross cash value in your contract. Now, how do you get hundred grand in there? Some of you can stroke a check and start that. Others, it might take you several years to get there. So what? Okay? My point is, you get to the point where you got 100000 in cash. Now, your net would be 100000 obviously, also. And let's assume your death benefit was a million. Some will be higher, some will be lower, and that's a, that's a factor of age and health, right? Again, who cares? Now, interest crediting, I already told you, it's guaranteed, insured, and tax-free at 5%, which is the lowest rate they've paid in 80 years, because why? Where's our interest rate environment? The lowest has been in 80 years. The historical average on these is about 6, 6.5, just so you know. Okay, So it should get better if and when our Fed ever starts to raise rates again. Now they're saying they're not going to raise them for the rest of the year which I think is crazy, but that's what they told us last week. They tell the chairman of the board of banks first, by the way. I told them they're nuts, but whatever. They don't listen to me. <laughs> um, so the point is, let's say, okay, so you get paid 5%. So a year from now, you would have 105 in your account, right? Your net would also be 105, obviously. Your death benefit, by the way, would go up a little bit. I'm using it, I'm not raising it for simplicity's sake, for just to understand the concept, okay? So, can I just ask a question? Yes. So, typically with these kind of deals, the policies are underwater for the first seven or eight years on a, on a, a, life, a whole life policy. So, if you put $100,000 in, it's not net cash, 100000 So, what's different with this? So, what's different with this is most whole life policies that are structured, you're right, the first three, four years are zeros, cash value. Because what it is, is they've structured it, the teeter-totter, way, way too much death benefit. Ours are 60 to 85% cash day one. Available. You, the other is, is, is you earn interest on it, it's just in what's called a reserve account, becomes available to you in three to seven years, depending on how we structure it in your aging health. So it's set up in a reserve account, it still earns, it's not available to you right away, but it still earns interest. And the reason that the reserve account is, God forbid, you got hit an ice cream truck the first few years, they got to stroke a big check, don't they? then it becomes available to you in subsequent years. That's the difference. They're not structuring it right, Andy. Or Andrew, is it? Adam. Adam, Adam, I'm sorry, Adam. Yeah. They're not structured, they're structuring way too heavy on the death benefit side. And the reason they're structuring way too heavy on the death benefit side is, one, they either don't know, because I'll tell you why that in a minute, or the commissions. Yeah, it's fees, yeah. It's fees, the commissions. We're pushing it down. And half my, half, I'm a general agent with two, there's five companies that offer this in the United States, by the way. I'm general agent for two of them. For most of you, that means nothing. But a general agent means you work directly with the company. So if you wanted to work with one of these companies, and you say you want to become an agent, you couldn't call them to work with them. They'd say, work with our local regional general agent. With the main company I work with, there's about 30 general agents in the United States. That's it. Gives you an idea. I'm the Arizona guy. So it's a pretty big deal. Okay? So we're direct with the company. There's no middleman. Nobody will beat us. Period. So if you got an example, you want to run some numbers, Great, bring it on, I'll show you head-to-head -head comparison, and we will beat the cash numbers. Period. We will not be beaten. We can't be. Yes? And your, the death benefit, instead of, uh, say, say I die, mm -hmm. you didn't put it to mine. So, mm -hmm. can they keep it in there? No. Not take the money? No, but, it's okay, because if you have this death benefit, this million dollar death benefit, yeah. they're going to stroke a million bucks to your kids tax-free. Could they then start their own? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's it's tax completely tax free. Okay. That, by the way, this is how you want to know how wealthy families pass on wealth one generation to the next. This is it. You ever heard of trust fund kids? They use this and trust. Boom. That's how it's done. Is there a maximum you could contribute? It's there's okay. It's four qualifications. Most people know age, health, right? The other two are income and assets. We can usually do around 20 times gross income on the death benefit side, depending on your age, or assets. So most people can qualify for a few million. It's usually never, hardly ever a problem. We hardly ever maximum, maximize somebody. Okay, a few cases we have. 
Vimmel's, you, some of you met him last year, he's maximized his. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I've got five of these. So anyway, um, but let me finish this thought because I want you to understand this process, how it works. So a year later, you got 100K. A year later, you got 105. You got a 105 available. You still got your million dollar death benefit. Now let's say you decide you want to access some, fun, some funds from it, okay? What you could do, day one, okay? Now, let's say you decide you want to access 50 grand out of the 100. Could you do the whole 100? Yes. I'm just using this as an example. Now, you notice your gross a year later would be 105 still, even though you took the loan. Your net would be 55. Notice what your death benefit did. You took 50. Where did you take the 50 from? The death benefit, right. Here's what I want you to understand. No loan or with a loan, your gross, your gross cash value is still 105. Doesn't matter. What about annual premiums? You're, you put in what, okay, so, so again, you're thinking about the traditional use of insurance. You're asking the wrong question. Okay. okay. If you're thinking about the traditional use of insurance and I'm going to pay a premium to cover a death benefit in case I'm gone, that's important. This is an investment. How much interest do you want to earn, Rich? The, the more max. you put it in, the more interest you're going to earn, right? Okay. So the question should be, how much can I put in? Yeah. That was my first question. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so who cares? Premiums are a non-factor. I want to put more money in so I can earn more interest on more cash. By the way, one of my tax attorney mentors states that he goes, you want free insurance? He does this with business owners. He works with Fortune 500 companies. He also works with two of the PGA golfers. If I said the name, you would know him, who have these. He also set up, anybody know a name, Jim Harbaugh? University of Michigan wanted, this is cool, two years ago wanted to give a bonus to Jim Harbaugh. And Jim Harbaugh is already a top income earner. Last thing he wants more taxable income, right? They also wanted a golden handcuff that Michigan did. So what they did is they fund $2 million a year policy. It's, 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 I can send you the article if you want. It's on ESPN. And, and Demas, the tax attorney, he's a mentor of mine, he's the one that structured this deal. He was at our office two weeks ago t training, uh, teaching us some tax stuff about this. But literally, they're putting $2 million a year into one of these for the next five years as a bonus for Jim Harbaugh. It's tax, he can access the funds tax-free. Does he like that? Yes. Oh, yes. Big time. The golden handcuff part is it's vested for five years. If he takes the money out and then it doesn't finish his five-year contract, he has to pay Michigan the money back. Oh. Is, is, is he go, you know, hear rumors he's leaving Michigan? No, he isn't. <laughs> Everybody wins. Michigan's happy. Jim Harbaugh's happy. This is an executive bonus plan. Okay, that's how it works. All right, let me finish. Like I said, I want to finish this. So we got, we had, whether we had a loan or no loan, we got credit at our five grants. So our gross cash value is 105 whether we took that 50K loan or not, right? Because the 50K came from over here, not over here. Okay? There it is. No loan or loan. Doesn't matter. Gross cash value is going to be 105. Now, is that tax free to buy that or do you pay taxes on the 100,000? You would pay your taxes up front. You go in just like a Roth IRA. You're going to grow tax free, right? When you earn income, you're always going to pay tax on it. There's no way around that. And if anybody tries to tell you that, they're no, I see. you're going to pay taxes on money either going in or you're going to pay tax going out, right? That's the difference between a traditional versus a Roth IRA, for example. Do you want to pay tax on the seed or do you want to pay it on the harvest? Yes. Can you exchange a property into it? Like a ten, a ten no, exchange? but there's a, because this is cash, okay? But you can do something called a 1031. Which is a if you have one of these already, if you have a contract, if you have a life insurance contract with some cash in it, we can 1031 tax free exchange it into that, put it into this, and let it grow cash. Now we'll drop the death benefit, whatever you had, but now you're growing cash, right? Again, what's more important? So 1031. Yeah. 1035. 1035. 1035. It's IRS code 1035. Works exactly the same as IRS code 1031 for real estate. Tax free exchange, right? Okay. The smallest I've seen that works effectively is about four or five hundred a month. Because it is just a, it doesn't, sort of the minimum in, minimum in that works. 
We I've our clients put over a million dollars into this. Yeah, and a minimum lump sum. Yeah. Hmm? Minimum lump sum, 10,000, 20,000. Any of those numbers will work. It's all dependent on what you wear. It's really more about what you're wearewithal. Right? What can you what can you swing, right? So what makes sense? If you put ten thousand a month, you're still looking at putting so I mean ten thousand in, you're still looking at so much per month. No. No. Okay. If you did ten thousand a year, let's say, that's what you're putting in. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say free insurance. How, what's the cost of insurance? It's the same as buying term. Here's how they do it. You put it into your ten grand, okay? You get your five hundred dollar interest at the end of the year, or the end of the year, the five percent interest, right? So what they do is they they say, Okay, you've got, I don't know, two hundred thousand dollar death benefit on that. Let's say. They'll say, okay, the cost of that is whatever. They'll so they'll pay you the five percent, then they'll peel off a little little bit of that percentage to pay for the cost of insurance. So maybe your net returns four and a half. What did the insurance cost you? It's self-funding. Bingo. Nothing. It's only taking a portion of the interest that they first credit you and then they just peel a piece off. But again, understand, you now have the access to funds that you can access and use elsewhere and not have to pay back if you don't want to and earn interest on it. Again, the last piece of this, I, I want to hit, hit this so you do understand. Again, loan, no loan, 5% interest, you go to 105, you're, you're available, you could still borrow access another 55 at that point, couldn't you? Against that 950 that's left, right? Now, the loan, we don't pay it back. There's a loan charge, right? 5% interest charge, I told you, it's a wash loan, it's the same. 5% on 50 grand is 2,500, right? Which side are they charging it on? The cash or the death benefit? Bingo. So you're 950. You don't pay the loan back. They charge you to so your death benefit's 947.5. Are we still okay? Yeah. We have 50 grand. What do we do with it? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. <laughs> it's your money. It takes you about two days EFT and wire it one. If you're paying 14 bucks, yes. I, I, so I was just going to ask: um, Is this something where you could eventually increase the amount in the death benefit ever, or yeah. is, would you have to make a whole new one? No, actually, here. Like, here how do you boost without, that number? Without confusing the issue here, because I'm trying to understand, you guys understand the concept first. If you put this fund this max borrow against it, your death benefit will still grow. It'll grow much slower than if you didn't grant it, but it'll still grow. And the reason is real simple. Every time you have more cash, whether you add more or you get credited interest, doesn't that create more death benefit? That's why. I didn't put that in there like I stated earlier. It would throw so off the whole thing you're trying to get us to share. Gotcha. Yeah. But this would actually be higher. That's awesome. Yeah. Huh. That's awesome. <laughs> I just want you to understand. So if you understand, here's the key point. If you understand that you're going to get credited interest based on your gross cash value, remember, what's gross cash value? Money I put in. Plus any interest that gets credited over time. If you understand that your interest crediting is based on your gross cash value, whether you later access the funds or not, how big do you want that number to be? The sky's the limit. Whatever you can funnel into that sucker over your lifetime, right? Do you understand why the wealthy keep getting wealthier? Yes. Do you understand why they keep funneling money into these things? And then they don't buy stocks and real estate and businesses directly for the most part. What they do is they borrow against their future death benefit and buy their stocks, businesses, real estate, or whatever. And what would happen if you're that $50,000 investment? In our example here, what if it went to put? What would the cash do in the policy? Keep growing. Granted, it would take time to replace that fifty grand, but about a decade or so later, you'd have your money back, wouldn't you? Are you protecting your downside now? So irregardless of economic conditions or whatever, your money is going to continue to grow. You always have access to more every year. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Yes. So this might seem kind of stupid, but um, if if you were trying to like have like onion layers of trying to like not have this be information where everybody's like, oh, I, you got great policy that I know about and that kind of stuff. Would you put that in like a trust or you can't, oh, I mean, there's some reasons, kind of? There's reasons to put this in the tr into a trust at times or not. Yes. Okay, interesting. Not necessary initially, but yeah. for family legacy planning and things like that, we get a lot of parents and grandparents who can't qualify <laughs> for these. No worries. They set it up in a trust and they have access to the cash. 
and then it passes on to the kids or grandkids tax free. Those are called t trust fund kids. Okay, gotcha. That's gotcha. done. <laughs> All right, I have to wrap up. There's lots of companies that offer, uh, there's lots of insurance companies in the United States, but I'll say, who, who are you going to, who, who, why do you recommend? It's real simple. Over 800 insurance companies in the U.S., about 39 are mutually owned. You've heard of some of them, Mass Mutual, Mutual of Omaha, Northwestern Mutual, for example. Why mutual company? No stockholders. I can get you a mutual company like a MetLife, I'll pay you around 3%. I mean, a, a stock company like MetLife, pay you 3% today, or a mutual will pay you 5 You want 3 or 5 5 Thank you. Uh, that's obvious. Um, out of those, about 10 want a strong dividend, have a strong dividend history. State Farm is a mutual company, but pays dividends on average of every third year. That doesn't work. Okay? So they have over 100 years of never missing a dividend. So they pay dividends through the Great Depression. That's powerful. And plan to continue to do so. I think they'll be okay. About those, about five of them offer products that what we call support the banking concept. What I mean is they have the contractual option where you can access the money against the death benefit or the cash. We want to take it from the death benefit, right? Mass Mutual, for example, has a product very similar to this, but if you take the money, it's coming from the cash and the death benefit. That's the worst case scenario. Doesn't work. So doesn't make sense. Out of those, one has the lowest fee. Lower fees means more cash, mathematically. <laughs> it's that simple. And I already told you we work direct. So bring it on. You have an, ex you have an illustration example? Go for it. Email it to me, send it to me, whatever. We'll run the head-to-head -head compare and we'll show you the difference. The, the amount of cash we generally show for most folks is anywhere from 30 to 50% more cash day one in every year the rest of their lives. That's what we see when we run exam comparisons. Okay? Um, I mentioned Liquidity, anywhere from 80 to 85% liquid day one. Uh, 60 if we do the tax free, there's tax deferred, tax free plans. We can do one or both, depends on your situation. So I always ask which is more important, liquidity or tax, tax free. And most of you say both, fine, we'll do both. <laughs> Without getting a lot of detail. Um, the misconception. Whole life contracts are not flexible regarding premium. That information is a seven, eight years old. They added what's called Flexible premium riders, which means you have a tremendous amount of flexibility. So, so Dan, if you set up a 10K annual premium case, your low end could be 4K a year, your high end would be about 11, 12K a year, without us having to change a thing or deal with any tax laws. You could skip a couple years, any of that, no problem. Tons of flexibility available today that didn't used to be available several years ago. Okay. If you have even more dramatic changes than that, we can do some things to make that work too. Okay, I just want you to understand the tremendous flexibility involved. So the number you come up with is not a hard and fast number, it's a benchmark. Okay? Just so you know. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Basically, let's do this. Um, you guys want to do some more research, look this up some more. There is a great website. Oh, there's the doll. I told you I got lots more good stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw one at you. One quick advanced concept here. Called branch banking. It's super simple to explain and understand. Thinking down the road a little bit. What if you set up one of these, and then you want to take the money from this and say a couple, three years down the road, fund another one? Could you do that? Sure, why not? First couple years was investing period and all that, so that's why we wait three, four years. Bottom line is this, we've run the numbers. Let's say you funded a multi-premium case. By year three, usually it's about 80% liquid, your funds are. So if you're putting in 10 grand, you can take eight out every year then, that forward, or more, right? Could you take that 10 grand and put it into number two? Yes. The cash in bank one continues to compound it. I use four to five. The contractual minimum guarantee is 4%. That is the highest contractual guarantee product you'll find in the United States. They're paying five and never paid less than five in 160 years, so I think we're safe. Okay? So you're making five of the money, the first bank, you borrow 80% of it and you dump it into bank two. How much are you earning in the money in bank two? Five. So 80% 80, 80 of the money, or eight grand in our example, is now earning what? Ten. Guaranteed, insured, and tax free. Could you do that again three, three or four years later? Wow. One of my mentors says 29 of these. Been doing it 16 years. And by the way, Joe is the four time president 
of the National Association of Financial Advisors. That is the top of the heap, of the highest, highest thing you could do in, our, in the financial industry. And as Joe says, I get all told all the time, this doesn't work. Don't tell me that. <laughs> yes. Is the three to four years thing like a legal cool a down vesting. type of thing? It's a vesting thing. Okay. There's a two year vesting period. Intr okay. They put that in there to set, protect them. That's so you couldn't do this. Yeah, so you just it. copy paste. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Which is, hey, insurance companies are smart. They're not stupid. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. But can you do this? That's, I mean, that's good that they let you do that, though. Yeah, you can. That's really cool. I mean, it's not their favorite thing that you do, but it's your money. Yeah. And you still gonna, only die once, right? You only die once, so you can get a death benefit from me, too. I have some hard money lenders, frankly, learning, earning. Now, they've been doing this about four or five years, and they're earning 15% on their money now. That's oh, yeah. tax-free. <laughs> Guaranteed. They're like being very picky about their loans now. <laughs> right? So that kind of is a real, real fast one for you. Um, told you the fees are zero. Here's website, infinitebanking.org. Um, I have nothing to do with this web website. Um, Nelson Nash is the godfather, sort of, of this concept. He's been doing it like 60 years. So there's decades of newsletters that you can, uh, you can, uh, please pass those around. Um, research on this website. You'll see, all, if you go online, you can sign all kinds of crazy stuff, good and bad. This is a reputable rep website that knows what they're talking about. So it's a good place to go. Mention the book. My favorite book is Financial Independence for the 21st Century. Highly recommend you read this book. There's about 12 books that exist on the concept, period. This is probably the best one. My favorite. So I highly recommend you read that. Here's our upcoming events. Tuesday night, 6.30 Pacific, I am going to do a live webinar. If we have your email address, or if you gave Dan our, your email address, we will send you a link. You can... Join on. I will share some things, answer any questions you have live. I don't know what you're going to ask me. And if you, if you can't join us at 6.30 on Tuesday, still register. You'll get the recorded version of it to watch anytime you want or send to somebody else. If you have a spouse or partner, somebody who's not here, and you're going to go home and say, hey, honey, guess what? We're going to buy some insurance. No, you're not. And they're going to say to you, are you nuts? No, what you need to say is, hey, I checked out something that looks really interesting. I want you to join me on this webinar. Let's check it out. And then you can answer any questions you want. Show them the information. There's articles, all kinds of fun stuff in there about, like, famous people have used this. You, by the way, we would not have Mickey Mouse or Big Macs or any of those things if this didn't, concept didn't exist. Let's guess how they funded Disneyland and McDonald's. Oh, how about Walmart? That's how they did it, folks. Oh, J.C. Penney saved pennies during the Great Depression using this. This isn't a new idea, okay? And there's articles in that stuff I just handed you out. We'll also email you more, more stuff. If you have any questions, by all means, reach out to me. Be happy to answer those questions. And how I meet with folks individually is usually go to meeting. If you want some, you know, we'll meet one-on-one -on -one for 30, 45 minutes, go over your situation, answer any questions you have, and then determine how to structure the best plan for you, okay? Bottom line is you're going to find I'm more conservative than most of you are because I'd rather see it work for you and then you build on it and add to it over time and be happy and successful with it than going crazy right off the bat. Make sense? So the next steps are this. Review the handout information. Register for the live webinar. Monday we'll send the email link invitation for the link just to register. All we need is your email, your name and email address. We don't sell it to anybody, nothing like that. It's just to get you to register, you know, in our system to be able to jump on the uh, webinar, research infinitebanking.org, read financial, you can get it on Amazon for about 25 bucks, okay, um, contact us, any questions you have, if you're ready, great, let me know, if you're not, great, let me know, <laughs> okay, I'm the weirdest, most odd salesperson you've ever met, I am so freaking busy, I have a hard time just keeping up with everybody, okay, and that's a good thing for both of us. If you have any questions, we're happy to help you. If you're ready to go, we're happy to help you. If you need time to get things together and don't, you know, I have people all the time, you don't remember me, but you, uh, I saw you in Seattle two years ago. Love the idea. We weren't ready. Now we are. Great. Where are you at? What can we do to help? Okay? It's that simple. So it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed this. I look forward to changing. The Thanks, Dan. Parents, thank you very My much. My pleasure. Incredible information. Thank you.
And I know this is going to be one of those things where you're going to go, you know what, I need to look at this video about three or four or five more times to really get what he said. It's going to be there in a few weeks. When you're ready, if you're not ready immediately, watch it over until you all then get in contact with parents. You, as you can see, will be happy you did. I'm very pleased that you made it here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will be uh, back, not next month, this is February, March, April, the end of April. So just kind of tuning in, see who we've got coming up. Thank you very much for making it, and uh, enjoy your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.